attention. It's time to wake up because uh, we're about to do a double feature drama mama. Some of you are so new that you've never even seen a drama mama before. But drama mama is a special segment. And so we have to welcome drama mama in with a special song. So if you're ready, let's listen to the drama mama song. Welcome my lovely, lovely imps to Drama Mama. This is a segment of the Demon Mama show where we try to get to the bottom of internet drama. You know, we take a drama that's going on that lots of people are talking about, and if you're out of the loop, we try to get you into the loop. Our focus in this show is to get all the receipts. We want to know what's actually going on before we pass any judgment on the drama. And then at the end, I will briefly give my opinion and listen to the opinions of my lovely chat. And we'll try to come to a conclusion about a drama, as long as it's not still developing. Today, we have two dramas. So if you're here for it, this is the Demon Mama Drama Mama double feature. And we're going to be talking today about Jordan Peterson and H3H3 and Joss Whedon, the creator of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Firefly, and you'll understand why this is such a big drama topic going forward. So if you're here and you're interested in actually understanding what's going on with any specific drama, if you like receipts and you don't like just making shit up off the top of your head, smack that motherfucking like button, smack that motherfucking subscribe button, because Drama Mama, we got all the motherfucking receipts all the time. Yeah. But we have to travel briefly back to 20, back to, uh, sorry, did I say 2005? 2015. We have to travel back in time to 2015. Okay. The year of 2015, where everybody was, was terrifyingly realizing that Hillary Clinton was doomed to lose the presidential race. Everybody hoped and dreamed that it wouldn't happen because as much as we hate Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump was even worse. But Donald Trump won. And then things got really weird for a while. And now we're here. And uh, things are still very weird. So if you're watching this in 2015 somehow because the time travel worked, run away. Run as fast as you can. Get away. You're never going to, you're, you're not going to like what lies before you. Transition now before it gets weird and uh, get ready for some weird shit. Okay, there you go. Um, yeah, so, uh, okay, uh, we're back in 2015, and there's this guy named Jordan Peterson. Has anybody here heard of fucking Jordan Peterson? I bet you have. I know you have, okay? Listen, Jordan Peterson is a, is a meme lord of meme lords. To open this up, I just want to give you an idea of, uh, of, of, uh, who Jordan Peterson is. Let me just let me just get us a little little bit of uh you know of 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 uh of data here. I want to show you a a accurate depiction of Jordan Peterson. Okay, it takes about five minutes for you to get an idea of who Jordan Peterson is. Okay, your father will have to remain in his coma for several more months. We'll be feeding him pure meat through a tube, just like you asked. In the meantime, let's go party all over Europe. When people think of happiness or pursuing happiness, the first thing they think of is, well, it's a pretty selfish desire. I want to be happy for me. I mean, after all, who wants to be unhappy? But I'm here to tell you that, in fact, happiness is far, far, far more than a selfish desire. It's actually a moral obligation. Whether or not you're happy, and certainly whether or not you act happy, is a very, very altruistic endeavor. Yes, indeed, we have a moral obligation. Happy people make the world better. Unhappy people tend to make the world worse. There's a scene in Pinocchio where Geppetto wishes on a star, right? And what it means is he lifts up his eyes beyond the horizon to something transcendent. And so he lifts his eyes up above his daily concerns and he says, what I want, what, what I want more than anything else is that 
my creation will become a genuine individual, right? It's, it's a heroic gesture because it's so unlikely. And that catalyzes the puppet's transformation into a real being. And we start as puppets. And so the trick is to get rid of your goddamn strings. I want to be like you, Mr. Peterson. Please tell me how to live. I want to get into this because this is a, I think this is a fascinating thing with you personally. The, your diet, um, you're on this carnivore diet yes. now. This is what, I mean, what's fascinating to me is I haven't heard any negative stories about people doing this. Well, um, I have a negative story. Okay. Okay. When we restricted our diet and then ate something we weren't supposed to, the reaction was absolutely catastrophic. What did you so, do? What did you switch to? Um, well, the worst response, and we had some apple cider that had sulfites in it, and that was really not good. Like, I was done for a month. You were done for a month? Oh, yeah, it took me out for a month. It was awful. Apple cider? Like, what, what was it sulfites doing? Sulfites in it. What was it doing to you? Oh, it, it, it produced an overwhelming sense of impending doom. under a window because it's a very sad, sad sight. Jesus said, take this cup. This is my blood of the new covenant. I said certified freak seven days a week. <laughs> what else do you want? Make that pull-out game a week. A fact. There's no God over me, there's no policeman over me, there's no one over me. I am God. Fucking cider. Fucking well, I didn't cider. sleep that, that month. I didn't sleep for 25 days. I didn't sleep what? at all. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Not and good. this is from so, fucking cider. From cider. That's what we thought, yeah. From I fucking mean, cider. Well, Again, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. You need to wake up, Dr. Peterson. My master, please wake up for us. We are so lost without you. Twelve more rules. What is natural must be right. Eat your meat and worship might. Stand up straight, listen carefully, accept your place within the hierarchy. It's Pinocchio. My boy. My brave little boy. Clean your room, pray to God, obey your lords with twelve new rules. Think of all the cash, think of all the suits. Don't you think the world needs 12 more rules? You watch what you say and you will find out what is some natural things must you say be right. come apart. Eat and you meat fall and apart. worship it's night. It's a feeling of chaotic Stand up straight, and dissolution. listen carefully, it's, it's a sense of accept your place And then if the you hierarchy. tell the truth, that pulls you together and strengthens you. 12 more rules. 12 more rules. dead Pinocchio. Yes, all of this happened in real life. For those of you who are wondering, that is an animation by Amon Animations. I will link it in the chat for anyone who wants to go watch it again because it is indeed Pog. Um, now, obviously, that's a little bit of a joke, but let's talk about the facts. Jordan Peterson 
is a world famous uh, writer, life coach. He used to be a, um, uh, a, or he's a PhD in psychology who wrote a little bit about psychology and then spun off into writing about philosophy and self-help, more or less. Um, now, uh, yes, we're about to get to that, Somniostatic. Now, Jordan Peterson was, if, if you lived through 2015 until recently, Jordan Peterson has been essentially inescapable. Every single college-aged white guy on the planet, it seems, has had a episode of flirting with Jordan Peterson's um, fatherly philosophy. Um, but the weird thing about Jordan Peterson is that he's gotten really famous from some pretty shitty stuff. So, and people don't necessarily know that right away when they hear about Jordan Peterson. A lot of people hear about Jordan Peterson and they hear, oh yeah, that's the guy who tells you to clean your room, right? Doesn't seem so dangerous. Jordan Peterson's first big, like, claim to fame outside of writing, like, writing books, his, his, like, internet claim to fame was him taking stand against a... Canadian law, a Canadian bill called C-16. This was a bill uh, that was designed to uh, make it possible for the government to, uh, to, uh, to treat trans people like anybody else who was being discriminated against in the workplace. So if you're in the workplace and somebody is aggressively mistreating you based on your trans status, um, say, using the wrong name, aggressively misgendering you, uh, making it impossible for you to do your job by making the place hostile to you, you could take action against that, okay? Now, Jordan Peterson became an internet meme by saying that they were making it illegal to misgender somebody and that you would be fined or in trouble for uh, calling somebody their real sex. That was his approach, more or less, was that, oh, this is a sign of the derangement of cultural Marxism. Now, there's where it starts to get really weird, you see? Because not only was he taking a stand against an anti-discrimination bill and framing it as a bill that was uh, attempting to force transgender ideology onto other people, but he also used that opportunity as a chance to launder the idea of cultural Marxism, okay? And let's take an idea real quick. Let's take a look at what cultural Marxism uh, actually is, okay? This is just a quick look into the surface, you know, just taking one second to look into what these people are talking about. Cultural Marxism is a far-right anti-Semitic conspiracy theory which claims that Western Marxism is the basis of continuing academic and intellectual efforts to subvert Western culture. The theory claims that an elite of Marxist theorists and the Frankfurt School intellectuals are secretly subverting Western society with a culture war that undermines Christian values of traditionalist conservatism and promotes the cultural liberal values of the 1960s counterculture and multiculturalism, progressiveness, political correctness, misrepresented as di identity politics now created by, uh, by critical theory. So, what I mean to say is that Jordan Peterson never really had a mask to take off, okay? This guy has been pushing the most far-right conspiracy theories from the get-go. He just used a word that people didn't immediately recognize. So instead of saying them, he would say cultural Marxists, which, by the way, is almost the exact term as cultural Bolshevism, which was literally used by the Nazis, means the exact same thing. And all he did was change one word. And a lot of people just never picked up on that, okay? Now, I remember in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, arguing with friends about to be careful with Jordan Peterson because I felt like while he presents himself sometimes as like a self-help guy, that he's actually laundering some really bad ideas. 
And as it turns out, wow, wow, wow was I correct. I am all, I've, I'm always correct on that sort of thing. This motherfucker has been doing this for a long time. So, this is a bit of a preamble to get to us to today's drama. But it's important. Because after Jordan Peterson's rise to fame, something terrifying happened. Okay? Jordan Peterson disappeared. Boom, boom. Right? I need, a fucking, I, need, I need my fucking soundboard back so I can go bum, bum, bum. Jordan Peterson disappeared. He stopped making public appearances. Um, his social media kept posting. Though, uh, it was made clear very shortly after that it was actually his daughter, Michaela Peterson, who was, was handling a lot of his social media. And it was then revealed that, uh, Jordan Peterson had retreated to a recovery center in Russia where he was undergoing an experimental treatment for uh, benzodi benzodiap- oh, fuck, how do you say it? Benzodiazepines? Benzos. Addiction. Now, benzos are a very strong drug, um, that can be very helpful in certain circumstances. Uh, bennies, benzos, uh, benzodiazepines, um, benzos are a very strong drug. They are, uh, you might have heard of them through the form of Xanax, Xannies, Bars, uh, those types of things, they're a strong-ass drug. They're a tranquilizer. They make you uh, tired. They suppress anxiety. The problem with benzos is that if you try to cold turkey them, you will die. As in, your heart will stop. Okay? Not kidding you. You cannot cold turkey benzos. They are an insanely strong drug that will literally kill you if you try to stop just like cold turkey. Now, it appears that what Jordan Peterson did was he left uh, for Russia to a, uh, a medical center where he was attempting to basically cold turkey his be uh, benzodiazepine addiction. And according to... Now, the reports become very murky because we can only trust the people near him and those people are not very trustworthy. The people closest to him was his daughter, Michaela Peterson, and her boyfriend, um, which we're not going to get into the boyfriend right now. That's a whole other story, okay? So, as far as we know, Jordan Peterson actually unironically fell into a coma while he was in this Russian uh, 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 rehab program overseen by his daughter. Uh, so, it seemed that he had slipped into a coma, and he was in a coma for quite a while, and then he came out of a coma and he couldn't walk. He couldn't speak. He appeared to be functionally, uh, like, like severely disabled after his coma. Um, and, uh, and he, there was a lot of weird questions about what his daughter was doing. Um, it, while this was happening, his daughter was still pushing the all meat diet that uh that he had been living on which he talked about very openly um jordan peterson was a proponent of an all meat diet meaning literally all meat they only ate uh salted meat um which is let's just say very unorthodox okay um and it's it's a bit concerning to me because i really don't think that a full meat diet I'm not a, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not an expert, but I feel like an all meat diet is not a good idea. I feel like that's a, a really good way to die. Um, but anyway, Michaela and was still promoting this all meat diet, even like with, 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 with Jordan Peterson's name all throughout the time that he was, uh, in this recovery program. And it appears a miracle happened because Jordan Peterson returned everyone. He returned from Russia. Now, it's very hard for me to explain exactly what the return from Russia has looked like. Um, because it has been very strange. And I have to say, I don't think 
that he found what he was looking for in in Mother Russia, okay? Um, I really don't think he found what he was looking for because he returned and what I can, what I can, his return has been a mixture of a deranged, almost incomprehensible internet posting and horrible life decisions, okay? Horrible life decisions. And that is where we come to today's drama. That was a bit of a wind-up, wasn't it? But it was interesting. Now you know why we're here. Again, the part, point of Drama Mama is to make it make sense to you who might be out of the loop. So what are we actually talking about today? Well, today we are talking about Jordan Peterson's latest fucking beef, okay? Which all starts with one of my one of my favorite content creators on YouTube, Ethan Klein, aka H3H3. Let's take a look, everybody. Years ago, I interviewed Jordan Peterson before I was very familiar with his politics. He was an interesting guest who I enjoyed sitting with. But especially now, I can see he's a dangerous gateway into alt-right, transphobia, and COVID misinfo. I removed both of these interviews today. In before cancer culture. Hey, there it is. Hey, hey Lance. Good to see you. Welcome. The radical left is taking over. Yeah, so this is a pretty simple and straightforward thing, right? Hey, I did, uh, H3H3 got some heat for the interview they did with, uh, Jordan Peterson. Um, by the way, uh, so this little comment, it might seem small to you. We're removing two interviews. We don't agree with this person that we interviewed in the past. We don't want him up there anymore. The resulting, the resulting fallout is so fucking unhinged just so you know uh the the fallout has been unbelievable okay and when i say unbelievable i mean look at this 2500 quote retweets fucking how, i wish you could get the comments the comments are fucking insane they never end the comments are fucking forever and half of them are just calling e ethan a fat jewish person literally Wow, Ethan, great moves. Keep it up. Proud of you. True, the only good answer. Here you go. I don't enjoy your content anymore, nor do I care for Mr. Peterson. But if you have not if you play the game of removing content for the mob, how long until you have nothing left? Is is Ethan Klein Jewish? Yes, he is. And he gets a lot of anti-Semitism online. And so there's just tons and tons. Like, I mean, it just never ends. Literally. The comments are just out of control. I'm embarrassed I ever lost your, I ever watched your show. Lamau, curious as to why you haven't deleted this video, the one in which iDubbbz says the N-word. Uh, maybe because iDubbbz TV is not an alt-right gateway. True! Isn't that weird? Isn't it weird that, like, in the original post, Ethan was pretty clear at the, as to the reason was not because of, like, saying a slur or anything, but rather because... Uh, Jordan Peterson is a consistent gateway and cons conspiracy theorist peddler. Listen, I'm going to be completely honest. It's going to be really hard for me to remain completely neutral on this particular drama just because we all know the history of Jordan Peterson so bad. Even with my little goofy intro here, we all know what Jordan Peterson's been up to. Like, this is all just very angry jordan peterson fans look at this one why do your people do the sneaky things they do when speaking truth becomes a gateway you know that the path it ultimately leads to must be good mm. the problem as i see it, is that listening to ethan klein is a gateway to taking pills that make your penis stop working so when are you going to address that I've never heard of you before, but if you're this cowardly about erasing interviews with previous guests just to virtue signal conformity to the current political hegemony, why would any future guest with any integrity ever want to be on your show? Maybe worth thinking about. 2,000 likes on that one. This is beyond cringe, kid. Peterson literally has nothing to do with the alt-right. Dude, come on. His whole shtick is responsibility and self-improvement, but I'm not really surprised. You're YouTube famous for being kind of re-re, so your whole life now depends on keeping up the good side. Damn, 1.2k likes for that comment. Um, but guess what? 
this this small decision to take down two years old interviews that you no longer feel good about resulted in a social media shitstorm that we all get to enjoy because let me tell you let me tell you right now jordan peterson was not happy to hear that h3h3 podcast took down his years old interviews and in fact him and all of his intellectual dark web buddies had a bit of a freak out meltdown session and we have a whole bunch of tweets to go over and it's just oh it just it never stops and it gets even worse because unfortunately jordan peterson is not just doubling down he's quadrupling down to the degree that I think he might have fucked his own career. Like, unironically. I think he might have unironically fucked his career forever. As if going into a coma from your weird, uh, uh, your weird meat diet plus your crippling benzo, benzo addiction is not enough. I think he might have actually, do like, destroyed his own career. Let's find out, though. Let's get there, shall we? Here we go. Here was the response to Ethan's announcement. What are you up to, Ethan? We had a good conversation. I enjoyed meeting you and talking with you. What have I said precisely that motivated your actions and accusations? Deleting our discussion. An honest question, H3H3. Finally, H3H3, you might can seriously consider providing me with the footage so I can post it, given that I agreed to appear on your show based on the agreement there would, in fact, be a show. Smiley face. Also, I should warn you that those who engage in cancel culture generally live to regret it. I'm not going to come after you, except politely in this Twitter stream, but the chickens will definitely come home to roost. You will be held to higher and higher and soon impossible to maintain ethical standards by the very mob you currently wish to please. Then you will make a mistake, then they will devour you with glee. Please take this warning seriously. I liked you. Oh no, Mother and Dragon of Chaos have infected his mind. We must clean, cleanse him in the apple cider. True! He finally saw your room. Oh, we got Andy Neo coming in. Listen, the whole the whole hit squad's rolling in. Please go over the tweet. He tells a rando to, to repent. Please give that to me. If you have other random tweets that he has here, please. Here we go again. Why don't you come to my LA show and see for yourself once again who I am? That would be a lot better. Eight, literally telling H3H3 who just made a statement about why they're removing it. Come to my show. Come to my show and you'll see for yourself. Oh, this is sad. People brawling in the parking lot right now. Whew. Oof. It really has made COVID really has made people turn on each other. I believe this was, I believe, oh yeah. If, um, if anybody, I, I believe if I'm not mistaken, I think the reason why, um, H3H3 even commented on anything here, Captain Eve, thank you for the tier two sub. Thank you very, very much. Uh, can't wait, can't wait to start on the never shit again diet. Thanks for introducing me. Please don't, please don't. Let me see. Look at this. By the way, these are all. All of these tweets have been made in the last three hours. Just so you know, hold on, watch this. I'm going to start scrolling, and every tweet you've seen has been in the last three hours. This drama mama, I'm telling you, it's fucking live, it's spicy. He's going nuclear. Peterson has lost it. Just completely and utterly, we're still going. Five hours. We finally reached the six hours moment. Okay, this is where it started. Seven hours ago, he released a video which we are going to watch together and think about. Die must die. A reading of my recent art article on the National Post. So, but if we go back, you know, I don't even know if we can get back to the original thing. Um, he's been, one of the things that, that caused the, the original uh, strife between H3H3 and Jordan Peterson is the fact that Jordan Peterson has started dipping his toe. I shouldn't say started. He's been, he's had his foot in the anti-vax, anti-mask brigade for a long time. But recently he started stepping up really hard and promoting anti-vaccine anti and anti-mask rallies on his Twitter. And so 
with him going in like sort of full hog into this anti-vax, anti-mask stuff, uh, H3H3 was like, all right, that's enough. I'm fucking done with it. Because um, as it turns out, if you become associated with an anti-vaxxer in the middle of a pandemic, that's a pretty bad thing, right? That's pretty bad, right? You know, a lot of people are going to look at that and go, oh, Jesus, what the fuck's your problem, dude? Why are you endorsing this guy? So it makes sense, you know? It makes sense why, you know, nobody would want to be associated with you when you are promoting a suicidal approach to a pandemic. Yeah, totally. To think one of my friends dropped me over calling this guy a transphobe. Wow, I'm really sorry about that. No, this, no, no. Jordan Peterson is a massive transphobe. Like, not even a little. He's like close friends with the arch transphobes of, of Canada. Kenneth Zucker. It turns out the true dragon of chaos was me the whole time. When the normies are like, nope, you know you're deep in the far right. Yeah, it's bad. Like, even normies are like, dude, what the fuck is your problem at this point? Yeah, like, I mean, look at this. Here you go. Here's here's what he's been tweeting lately. Look. Jordan Peterson. More of this, please. Self-isolation law set to be scrapped in favor of a move towards learning to live your life with COVID. Boris Johnson wants to permanently repeal emergency coronavirus laws as case numbers continue to fall. I don't know. Like, like I just, I want people to be aware that, like, a, a an approach that says to live with COVID is a genocidal approach. I want you to understand that, okay? Telling people you're just going to have to live with COVID means a lot of people are just going to die. That is a nice way of saying some of your relatives are going to die and we don't care. Yeah, this is what he's been doing. And this is why people, a lot of his former allies, uh, like the centrists who've been okay with Jordan Peterson, are quickly like pulling out. Because as it turns out, just sitting here and retweeting tons of, of anti-vaccine um, shit is just, you know, not good. Oh, yeah, here we go. Just constant anti-vaccine stuff lately. And, it, and, and, and that is what really prompted this. But that's the, that's the root of it. That's the root of it. What, 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 what branches out from there are, is just wildness. Look at this. Accusations of this sort. So let's see if we can get the original one. Can we get the original one up here? Oh, it got deleted. Accusations of this sort are both confessions and projections of the purely Freudian sort. DJ Matt thinks to himself, but perhaps doesn't know it. Why would I personally do such a thing in such a position? Uh, him just yelling at some random person. Uh, I don't know who this person is, but he's full of it. Jordan Peterson is a mensch in every possible way. Jordan, ignore these fools. Believe me, I struggle at times to ignore defamers, haters, and parasites, but I quickly come to my senses and move on. Cheers, buddy. So here's them circling the wag the wagons around their friends, you know? Here we go. This is my favorite one. I love this one. My room after this happened. This is Shmo Yoho making fun of... um. This is the, the, the guys who do songify the news. Big YouTubers. My room after this happened. It's okay. Jordan's room is also messy. And guess what? Jordan Peterson responded to the joke about his room being messy. Not anymore. It's now shiny, clean, and beautiful too, like the rest of my house. Now that I've finished renovating and recovered from being ill. Dude. Dude. Wait, he mentioned having a queer kid as a patient? That's horrifying. Don't you understand at all what you're participating in? Don't you think this could happen to you and those you value? How can you be so sure that the pendulum won't swing, swing your way? It has before, you know. By the way, when he says, how can you be so sure that the pendulum won't swing your way? It has before, you know. This is him basically saying that this is an, this is this is code to say the Nazis were doing a cancel culture. That's what that that's what that means. And when it does again, remember your words and repent. This is a random this is a random follower. This is a random 1000 viewer. Look at this. This person has 483 followers. Tiny account. Jordan Peterson just fucking screaming telling him to repent. 
What are you up to, Ethan? We had a good conversation, so here's Ethan's replies. To start, you called a ban on conversion therapy, moral grandstanding. This was the one that did it. That was, this was the one that did it. To start, you called a ban on conversion therapy, moral grandstanding six days ago. This was when Justin Trudeau announced a nationwide ban on conversion therapy against queer kids. Conversion therapy is fucking evil. You believe in enforced monogamy. Here's from a New York Times interview. Violent attacks are what happens when men do not have partners, Mr. Peterson says, and society needs to work to make sure those men get married. He was angry at God because women were rejecting him, Mr. Pe Mr. Peterson says of the Toronto killer. The cure for that is enforced monogamy. That's actually why monogamy emerges. Mr. Peterson, uh... Uh, uh, Mr. Peterson does not pause when he says this. Enforced monogamy is to him simply a rational solution. Otherwise, women will all only go for the most high status men, he explains, and that he could and that could couldn't make either gender happy in the end. Half the men fail, he says, meaning that they don't procreate and no one cares about the men who fail. I laugh because that's absurd. You're laughing about them. That's because you're female. Do you do you guys see? What the fuck this guy's been up to this entire time? Your mischaracterization of Bill C-16 resulted in a surge of transphobia. The bill was ad created to add trans people as a protected group against hate crimes. Using the wrong pronoun result would not result in anyone going to jail. In fact, to this day, zero people have gone to jail as a result of Bill C-16. Yeah, Jordan Peterson, his, his big claim to fame... In, in, in opposing Bill C-16 was claiming that people were going to be jailed for accidentally misgendering trans people. Unironically, that's what this guy did. Using the wrong pronouns would need to be considered in totality with other actions for it to even constitute a hate crime, basically like any other hate crime. As I, as, as in person, I found you amic, as a person, I found you amicable and our conversations very interesting and insightful, but I'm just not comfortable being part of a pipeline leading to takes like this. Up yours, J Justin Trudeau. Seriously, you'd have to kill me first. This is him swearing at Justin Trudeau for recommending a booster shot for vaccine. And this is also him downplaying science people who've been debunking joe rogan's uh anti-vax talking points so things have been a little weird in the world of jordan peterson but guess what it's not just jordan peterson who's been getting in on this because guess who else has michaela peterson appearing once again from the shadows michaela peterson has weighed in to tell us what her opinion is on everything. Thank goodness H3H3 Productions is out there saving the world from dangerous people like Jordan Peterson. And then Ethan replied, "This is the kill. This is the kill. This is the kill shot right here. Okay, this is the kill shot. How is fleecing your father's fandom going? Hundred dollars per month for the Lion Club, teaching people that eating only meat will cure all your ailments. Damn, must have been nice to be posting cute selfies from your father's social media accounts while he was nearly dying. Just, ooh, boom! Like I said, the fucking kill shot here. And then this is hit. this is Ethan Klein taking a shot at the quartering. Uh, Jordan Peterson is no, no more a gateway to the alt-right than you are, Ethan. Deleting your interviews is truly a new low. How many alt-right members are there, Ethan? Do you even have any idea? What a huge L. No stupid questions. How do I convince my husband that him pissing on the floor is not okay and that he needs to be responsible for it? <laughs> this is the quartering who famously got drunk on stream and pissed on his floor. Incredible. Or perhaps in a drawer. We're not sure if it's a piss drawer or a piss floor. One of the two. Are these right-wingers actually scared that Jordan Peterson won't be able to clearly communicate his ideas to me and H3H3 Productions? I'm a dumb himbo. Jordan Peterson has dealt with way more contentious interviewers than me. Step one, mock and insult someone relentlessly. Step two, ask them to come on your show. Step three, profit. Yeah, because uh, because Hassan is known for doing kill killer interviews on his show, right? That's what Hassan is known for. I hope Jordan Peterson knows that these two grifters, Ethan and Hassan, purposely started this controversy so they could try and get him on their newly launched show as a hostile guest to drive views. 
They just said they were not having him on there anymore. These people are so stupid. And by the way, right-wingers will say anything and it won't be true. Right-wingers make all kinds of predictions that are never true. They say stupid shit like that and it never happens. And yet their followers never notice that none of their predictions are ever correct. But this is what you've now seen is the series of interactions that blew up over the course of the four, of the 14th and the 15th. Now it's four days later and the war has been raging. Okay. The war has been raging. And now we get to today's update to this wild, uh, wild drama. Oh, oh, look at this. We have a new tweet. Surely this is the sign of a healthy individual. You don't get to choose not to pay a price. You get to choose which poison you're going to take. That's it. You're going to pay a price for everything you do and everything you don't do. Jordan Peterson. This was posted two hours ago. Just so you know. Two hours ago, Jordan Peterson was posting, you don't get to choose not to pay a price. You have to choose which poison you're going to take. Ah! Literal, just, just straight up, epic tier teenager meltdown on Twitter. Like, how? This old man making threats? Yeah, it's fucking wild. He's losing it. He's straight up been posting nonstop. And guess what? We got the threads, everybody. We got the motherfucking threads. Are you fucking ready to go through the massive meltdown threads? Let's fucking see. Let's see what the meltdown has entailed because I know what the meltdown entails, but you all don't know yet. Let's see. Here we go. This is the thread in which P Jordan Peterson starts his meltdown. Your government, Canadians, doing its best successfully to subvert STEM research process. Supporting equitable access to funding opportunities for all members of the research community. Promoting the integration of equity, diversity, and inclusion-related considerations in research designs and practices. Increasing equitable and inclusive participation in the research systems, including on research teams. Collecting data and co conducting the analyses needed to include equity, diversity, and inclusion considerations in decision making. Though these means the agents though these means the agencies will work with those involved in the research system to develop inclusive culture needed for research excellence and to achieve outcomes that are rigorous, relevant, and accessible to diverse populations. So this is just a decision to make a more active a very boring decision, might I say, to try to improve diversity in STEM research. And he is very angry about this because in his view, the government is attempting to subvert science. Subvert science by injecting minorities into it, apparently. From, from facts about DIE. Now, here's where it gets really weird, okay? Notice this. The consideration and integration of equity, diversion, and inclusion, EDI. He calls it DIE. So... Jordan Peterson has decided to rename this uh, in his mind for his fans, rename the EDI, some random EDI law, and he's freaking out about it, calling it die. And he recently just released a video today, literally three hours ago, that's called die must die. Okay, let's keep going. Let's read about what it actually is. The Consideration and Integration of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, EDI. Can we have examples of good EDI? Can we have guidelines for integrating EDI into a discovery grant? My research topic has no connection to EDI. Why do I need to address EDI in my discovery grant? Should I use a writing style that includes both feminine and masculine forms? How can performance and excellence be reconciled with EDI? By the way, just so you know, reading this little general questions, the fact, should I use a writing style that includes both feminine and masculine forms? That just tells you how far behind STEM actually is. Like, STEM is, is, is so fucked. The culture in STEM is so fucked that, like, the discourse that STEM people are having is whether they should say his or her. They haven't even moved beyond that. It's bad. They could just use the, J, they, but no, no. I'm telling you, the situation in STEM is not good, okay? 
external scientists are not necessarily trained in EDI. How is their evaluation taken into consideration? According to our sources, for the 2020 competition, external scientists generally provided very little feedback on the quality of EDI consideration in grant applications. Most often, they simply pointed out whether or not the applicant addressed this point. The following is an excerpt from a message. So literally all they're saying is that some people don't know about about EDI yet and that they want to teach more people about EDI that it will be noted if if people submit grant applications that discuss the diversity of the team that will be noted if they don't that will also be noted that is literally all that is literally all that is being discussed is just can we find out if scientists are actually taking the time to talk about diversity or if they don't give a shit because right now we okay now there's a couple of things i want to talk about with regard to this first of all we're going to take a small second right now and we're going to explain why diversity in science is important okay i know for most of you this is really really easy and and whatever but let me tell you diversity in science is incredibly important and the reason for that is because different people have different perspectives on complicated issues and you want that you want different views on a complicated issue when you're trying to discover new things diversity is very important people who are able to come in and think about an issue differently are able to perhaps discover things that other people did not it is incredibly important to have diverse perspectives it is literally the only way that we actually develop new knowledge is by having people who think differently work together with one another and discover new ideas diversity of gender of religion of worldview are is super super fucking important now, of course, this is undersold for political reasons because it is good for science to have diverse perspe perspectives. It is good for science to have lots and lots of women, um, lots and lots of trans people, lots and lots of, um, of people of color, of all types. This is all good for science. But the reason it doesn't happen is for political reasons because there is are social forces that say well women shouldn't go into stem there are social forces that make stem departments um extremely hostile to women because of an attitude that pervades them and a sexist attitude that is continually being in by the way just let's have a little remember remember that jordan peterson said that the only reason somebody wouldn't agree with his proposal for forced monogamy to prevent school shooters is because you're a female so do you think that Jordan Peterson and his fans might be like sort of directly a part of the cult of the culture that prevents diversity in STEM? Forced monogamy school shooters? Yeah, it wasn't actually a school shooter. It was a spree shooter in Toronto. And Jordan Peterson said that forced monogamy would have prevented this from happening because people uh, because the, the shooter wrote about how women didn't like him. And so... Uh, so he said that if 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 a woman had been you know uh encouraged to marry him he probably wouldn't have done a school shooting and instead i don't know maybe he would just abuse a woman it's fucked okay it's really fucked it's jordan peterson has a demented worldview okay i'm sorry i i i just i'm gonna be open with that i think toward jordan peterson's worldview is sexist and demented um but yeah this is what he's been very angry about okay but guess what it's not over yet. It's not fucking over yet because he's not done so, melting down. We have a Jordan Peterson video to watch. It's been a long time. Like I said, back in the time portal, everybody, we got to watch. We got to react to a Jordan Peterson video. This is what it would have been like to react. If you'd been watching Demon Mama in 2015, this is what you would have seen. Me reacting live to a new Jordan Peterson video. Time is a circle. It's like poetry. It repeats twice. The first time as a farce and the second time as a rhyme. Let's continue. Let's watch this shit, okay, everybody? Let's do it. Let's see. Hello, everyone. <sighs> okay. Not gonna lie. Not a good start, okay? I, like... This is not an old man who's looking good. Okay? 
no one listen aging is tough okay everybody aging is tough you know you don't look your best when you're aging it's just how it goes but there's a lot of old people who look fine this is not a this is not an old person who looks like he's doing okay let's just let's just be straight up here okay Whew. the all i mean can you the all meat diet i don't even know if he's on it anymore boy I wrote this article recently for one of Canada's major newspapers, the National Post. I'm reading it for those of you who would rather watch and listen. It's entitled, D.I.E. Must Die. This is epic, bro. God, I... <sighs> you know, do you really think... I don't know. Jordan Peterson has managed to succeed not by being a completely unhinged, uh, you know, uh, 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 demagogue, but by instead, uh, sort of j carefully disguising his demagoguery as like life advice and psychology. I don't know if the, if the fully unchained look is going to do so good for Jordan Peterson. You know, there's some people who, who, you know, they, they look good going completely unchained, unchained, you know, like, um, you know, like Milo Yiannopoulos. Milo Yiannopoulos, that, that boy knows how to go insane, you know? That guy knows how to go out and say some insane shit. Jordan Peterson doesn't have the energy for that. This is his mask off video for sure. Oh yeah, I'm another person who knows how to go unhinged. I If I want to go extreme, I know how to go extreme. I know how to bring the energy. A lot of people do. Jordan Peterson, not that type. Oh boy. This is why. I recently resigned from my position as full tenured professor at the University of Toronto. I am now Professor Emeritus, and before I turn 60, Emeritus is... That's right. In this article, he announced that he resigned from his tenured position at the university. I just want you to know what that means. A ten, if you get tenure at a university, it is basically, you are set for life. You will be paid for the rest of your life as long as you remain there. And it is essentially impossible to remove you without you like literally shooting someone in the halls of the school. He willingly resigned from his tenure, from his free fucking money as a political statement against what? Not some huge thing but rather a small document discussing diversity in stem tenured professors oftentimes jump into other positions sometimes it's an okay career move i don't know if you know this but it doesn't really look like he's got anything else lined up a lot of people were pretty surprised by this generally a designation reserved for superannuated faculty albeit those who had served their term with some distinction yeah. I had envisioned teaching and researching at the U of T full time until they had to haul my skeleton out of my office. <laughs> Val 9000 says, wow, the all meat diet is working so well. He doesn't look a day over 75. Yeah. Jordan Peterson, 76 year old man. Doesn't look a day over 75. Definitely. I loved my job. And my students, undergraduates and graduates alike were positively predisposed toward me. But that career path was not meant to be. Uh -oh. There are many reasons, including the fact that I can now teach many more people and with less interference online. But here's a few more. First, my qualified and supremely trained heterosexual white male grad students, and I've had many others. What? Can we get a, I gotta get this. What the fuck? By the way, are no longer eligible upon graduation for university research positions, despite stellar scientific dossiers. That is not what it says. That is literally not what the document that he showed says. This is partly because of diversity, inclusivity, and equity mandates. My preferred acronym, DIE. These have been imposed universally in academia. or as I prefer to call it, poop. Because diversity is poopy. Despite the fact 
that university hiring committees had yeah, less interference. What does that mean? He was tenured. Okay. It's an, it's an unhinged act. Jordan Peterson has never faced actual censorship in his entire fucking life. Jordan Peterson is a rich white doctorate with a massive Patreon who has been invited to talk on every platform in the entire fucking every major media pat platform in the entire world. There's not like a fucking single channel that at some point hasn't extended an interview op opportunity to Jordan Peterson. This is not a man whose words are being suppressed. All that he has is artifice. It's interesting. Um, there was a conversation. Oh, what, what? I was listening to a conversation recently and I can't remember who it was or what it was. I remember they were talking about how fascism requires an enemy, an, an, an overwhelming enemy. You cannot, like, you can't keep fascism going without some sort of overwhelming threat. You always have to have an overwhelming threat to convince everybody to, oh, was it Vosh and Funny Rhetorician? That's what it was. It was literally last night. You need to have a them. And that's true. And it's apparent even in the way that he goes about this. You, what, there's no Bill C-16 anymore. The critical race theory thing isn't happening in Canada. He needs to pick something that is equivalent to make a big deal about. We're going to watch the Daily Wire uh, JP Ben Shabibo talk? Yeah, if you send it to me, that sounds great. That sounds perfect. Already done everything reasonable for all the years of my career and then some to ensure that no qualified minority candidates were ever overlooked. My students are also partly unacceptable, precisely because they are my students. I am academic persona non grata because of my unacceptable philosophical. You just willingly gave up your tenure, you idiot. Positions. And this isn't just some inconvenience. These facts rendered my job morally untenable how ah morally untenable how interesting see the school just wasn't fascist enough for him i accept prospective researchers and train them in good conscience knowing their employment prospects to be minimal second reason this is one of many idiot issues of appalling ideology currently demolishing the universities and downstream the general culture. Not least because there are simply not enough qualified BIPOC people in the pipeline. BIPOC, black, indigenous, and people of color, for those of you not in the knowing woke. This has been common. The delivery on this is the most insane shit I've ever seen. Can I just show you, like, hold on a second. The delivery on this is so fucking insane. Rise to the galaxy while secretly supporting the scene which you have built, upon which we stand, will bring an end to the. Yeah, literally. Common knowledge among any. Or B I P O C for those of you who are not in the knowing woke. <sighs> Did I, remember when I said that that he can't do unhinged? What what I'm really saying is he can't seem grandiose. He's a sad old man who who shoots himself in the foot at every opportunity he possibly can. His richness, his the the the. the the un the the adulation that his fa fans have given him is not enough he must continue to embarrass himself it's truly truly just a stack of 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 failure of self failure a man who's given everything who has never been censored in his life who's barely ever received pushback a man who makes millions of dollars uh bitching about news articles and this guy's like, I have been persecuted personally. Remotely Dude. truthful academic who has served on a hiring committee for the last three decades. This means we're out to produce a generation of researchers utterly unqualified for the job. 
and we've seen what that means already in the horrible grievance studies disciplines. That, combined with the death of objective testing, has compromised the university so badly. Hold on a second. Let's take a look. Marks from an SAT or an ACT exam are not required for admission to Ontario universities. Wow. So you don't have to do SAT or ACT st scores. What a surprise. Instead, they just look at your grades. That it can hardly be overstated. And what happens in the universities eventually colors everything, as we have discovered. All my craven colleagues must craft die statements to obtain a research grant. That's not what it said. That is not what the that is not what the document he showed said. Just just this is why we do the receipts everybody. The document that Jordan Peterson showed did not say that. In fact, it explicitly said the opposite. <laughs> nice roads. They all lie, excepting the minority of true believers. And they teach their students to do the same. And they do it constantly with various rational. All of this. Everyone, all of my craven colleagues are lying. They're all taught to lie and perpetuate a lie. Uh, Mr. Peterson, what's the lie? Oh, the STEM department at the University of Toronto is now going to be recording whether or not students took the time to put diversity information in their study because we've asked them to do so and a lot of them aren't doing it that's that's the great threat do you see why jordan peterson i don't think is going to succeed in getting this one particularly off the ground it just you know i'm just saying i feel like he might not make it that far generalizations and justifications further corrupting what is already a stunningly corrupt enterprise some of my colleagues even allow themselves to undergo so-called anti-bias training conducted by supremely unqualified human resources personnel, lecturing inanely and blithely and in an accusatory manner about theoretically all-pervasive... Deranged. Deranged. Do you know that... Yeah, do you know it's deranged? Racist, sexist, heterosexist attitudes. Such training is now often a precondition to occupy a faculty position on a hiring yeah, committee. Yeah, absolutely. Need I point out that implicit the video. attitudes cannot, by the definitions generated by those who have made them a central point of our culture, hey, Geeky, be transformed welcome. by short-term explicit training? Assuming that those biases exist. Training? in the manner claimed and that is a very weak claim and i'm speaking scientifically here the implicit association test the much vaunted iat which purports to objectively diagnose implicit bias that's automatic racism and the like is by no means powerful enough valid and reliable enough to do what it purports to do no one is talking about an implicit bias test, you maniac. Holy fuck. Nobody is talking about that. The, literally, he's freaking out about a single change to the school's diversity program. And he's acting, he's calling it die as if it's the end of the world. This is the equivalent of the person who, who tries to sue a, a, a fucking Panera Bread because their soup came out cold. Two of the original designers of that test, Anthony Greenwald and Brian Nozick, have said as much publicly. The third, Professor Mazarin Banaji of Harvard, remains recalcitrant. Much of this can be a trip. Wait. Two people... Okay, this is so... This is such categorical conspiracy theorist word salad. Notice 
first of all, how biased every single thing he's saying here. He claims that he's speaking scientifically. He literally just said, I'm speaking scientifically. And then he proceeds to just say that the people who don't agree with his assert assertion are being recalcitrant and never actually quotes what those people said about the study. A study, which let me remind you, has nothing to do with what we're talking about at all. None of the, this, this fucking implicit bias has nothing to do with the diversity program. Attributed to her overtly leftist political agenda, as well as to her embeddedness within a subdiscipline of psychology, social psychology, so corrupt that it denied the existence of left-wing authoritarianism for six decades after World War II. The same social psychologists wait, wait, broadly wait, wait. were left wing within a partly leftist political. This is it. We were just talking about cultural Marxism. Do I need to bring it up again? He, this is cultural Marxism. He's about to say, now listen, listen closely. What he's about to say is that a bunch of professors invented social science to undermine Western values. And what he means to say, what he's dog whistling to, is that Jews, because keep in mind, if you go and look at the people he's about to talk about, most of them were Jewish people, Jewish people who were dissenting from the rise of anti-Semitic, uh, capitalist, uh, fascist movements in Europe at the time, which he says are secretly, the Frankfurt School, secretly trying to undermine Western society. Watch. Just watch. Agenda, as well as to her embedded within a subdiscipline of psychology social psychology so corrupt social psychology is so corrupt that it denied the existence of left-wing authoritarianism for six decades after it denied the existence of left-wing authoritarianism for six decades what he is talking about is cultural marxism he is referencing the Frankfurt School here. And when he says that they denied the existence of left-wing authoritarianism, what he means is that people said that be, saying that the Frankfurt School is, un, is subverting Western society. Notice he used the exact same words. Notice that in his post, he literally said that the DIE program is subverting science. Use the same exact wording. What he's saying here is that, oh, he's making a reference to the Frankfurt School, and he's basically saying, yeah, they're pulling the strings. World War II. The same social just, just psychologists, pointing that out. broadly speaking, also casually regard conservatism in the guise of system justification as a form of psychopathology. Banerjee's continued countenancing of the misuse of her... Re Demon Mama is big dog, and she hates listening to dog whistles. True! I fucking hate them! They drive me nuts, and I can hear them all the time! It's not big dog! Fucking drives me nuts! Makes me go... Burr. ...research instrument, combined with the status of her position at Harvard, is a prime reason we all still suffer under the die yoke, with its baleful effect on what was once the closest we had ever come to truly meritorious selection. Ah, yes. We are now closer to merit than ever before. Because, thankfully, we've managed to undercut every single social program that would make anybody else who's not a white guy even capable of getting into STEM. <laughs> How perfect! Furthermore, the accrediting board for grad clinical psych training programs in Canada are now planning to refuse to accredit university clinical programs unless they have a social justice orientation. That, combined with some recent legis- Citation needed. He's talking about something completely different now, which is not cited. Legislative changes in Canada, claiming to outlaw so-called conversion therapy, but really making it exceedingly risky for clinicians to do anything ever but agree always and about everything with their clients. 
Do you know how insane it is to say that? I'm sorry, I am going to use, please forgive me in advance, I am going to use just a tiny, tiny bit of imperfect language here. This is fucking insane. This is fucking insane. Listen to this again. Furthermore, the accrediting board for grad clinical psych training programs in Canada are now planning to refuse to accredit university clinical programs unless they have a social... So what his claim is, with no citation, is that if you don't, if you don't literally, that, that in Canada, clinical psychology programs will only allow you to treat your patient if you agree with everything they say no matter what. That's his claim. Do you realize that that's like me saying that doctors, that when you walk into the doctor, they give you a fentanyl shot with your vaccine? That is the same level of insanity. Just like, yeah, look at the face. The face really says it all. Everybody, did you get your free fent with your fucking, uh, with your fucking vaccine? I did. I loved my OD. It was awesome. I went in and they were like, oh, you came for your vaccine. Would you like your free injection of fentanyl? And I was like, yeah, dude, it was sick. What? You guys didn't get that? You guys didn't get that when you got your vaccine? I did. Social justice orientation. That, combined with some recent legislative changes in Canada, claiming to outlaw so-called conversion therapy, but really- Yeah, they did ban conversion therapy, which is monstrous. And what J Jordan Peterson is about to do right here is again, is again, do apologia for conversion therapy. Let me just show you this real quick. Let's do this real quick. Here we go. This was the guy, by the way. I'm about to tell you about a guy who Jordan Peterson defended for a very long time. The friends, literal friends. Here we go. Kenneth Zucker is an American-Canadian psychologist and sexologist. He was named editor-in-chief of the Archives of Sexual Behavior in 2001. He was a psychologist-in-chief at Toronto's Center for Addiction and Mental Health, aka CAMH, and the head of its Gender Identity Service until its closure in December 2015. Now, you might be going, huh, wow, this guy ran a gender clinic? Well, he must have been really good. <laughs> Closure of the CAMH Gender Clinic, uh, a gender identity clinic for children. In 2015, the Ontario Provincial Parliament introduced legislation banning com conversion therapy. Members of Rainbow Health Ontario, a provincial health promotion and navigation organization, approached CAMH expressing concern regarding Zucker's clinic. They alleged that they had had multiple cases of suicide of transgender youth as a result of the methods used by Zucker and that a ban on conversion therapy made his methods illegal. Cam H stopped the clinic from accepting new patients and initiated an external review of the clinic's practices. The reviewers were child, were child and adolescent psychiatrist Suzanne Zink of Halifax and Antonio, Antonio P, uh, Pig, Pignatiello of Toronto. They invited stakeholders to comment on their experiences in the clinic. A former client, now an adult, claimed Zucker asked him to remove his shirt in front of other cl clinicians, laughed when he complied, and then referred to him as a hairy little vermin. The review noted numerous strengths of the clinic, but it also described it as an insular entity with an approach dissimilar from other clinics and described it as being out of step with current best practices, including WPATH SOC version 7. They also raised concerns about con clinicians asking age-inappropriate questions. Hmm... I wonder what clinicians asking young trans people, young vulnerable trans people, what inappropriate questions they might have been asking them. After the review, Cam H shut down the clinic and fired Zucker. Kwame McKenzie, the medical director of CMA CAMH's Child, Youth, and Family Services said, We want to apologize for the fact that not all of the practices in our childhood gender identity clinic are in step with the latest thinking, and that Zucker is no longer at CAMH. CAMH announced a process of consul a consultation with community leaders to examine how to best offer care going forward. CAMH Director Kwame McKenzie said that Zucker's treatments were against the center's guidelines. Prior to the review, he stated there exist two groups of thinking on therapy for children under 11. The client who accused Zucker of calling him a vermin later withdrew the accusation, 
and which was reported in the news as false. CAMH removed the report from its website and apologized, and placed it with a summary of the report, which has not survived and moved to its new website. So it's being buried. Zucker sought legal justification with McKenzie and CAMH, for which CAMH again apologized, settled with Zucker, paying $586,000 in damage. When the settlement was announced, CAMH stated it stands by his decision to close the clinic. Following an external review, which concluded the clinic was not meeting the, stand the needs of gender expansive and trans children and their families. We believe a modernized approach to delivering services better support supports diverse patients through timely care. Best, pa best practice in timely care. As editor of Archives of Sexual Behavior, Zucker published a controversial study on conversion therapy by Robert Spitzer. According to the New York Times, after his presentation of the study caused controversy, Spitzer asked Zucker to publish it. I knew Bob and the quality of his work and I agreed to publish it, Zucker said, but I told him I would only do it if I also published commentaries. Spitzer later recanted his study's conclusions. Hmm. Several LGBT activists spoke out against Zucker's 2008 appointment to the DSM-5 working group. Yeah, keep in mind, this guy, the child abuser, the alleged child abuser, was literally invited to help make the rules for trans people worldwide. The National Gay and Lesbian Tax Force issued a statement questioning the APA's decision to appoint Zucker and a second member of the work panel. According to a response by the APA, Zucker does not advocate conversion therapy in all cases, and he opposes change therapy for gay people under all circumstances. Notice that he says there that he does support change therapy, aka conversion therapy, for trans kids. And this is the guy, by the way, when, when Jordan Peterson... When this fucking screaming asshole is talking about people being banned from this, he's talking about Kenneth Zucker. He's talking about Kenneth Zucker, a guy who had a mountain of complaints from children about inappropriate behavior, which resulted in, as a PR move, Cam H settling out and closing the entire gender, di gender division of their, of their clinic. Just so you know what the context is. Because I always bring the motherfucking receipts. That's what he's making a reference to. He's referring to his buddy, a guy who had a stack of fucking complaints against him, which many of which were investigated, and then he was fired to save face, and then the case ended. That's who he's defending. And he's doing it by peddling an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory about cultural Marxism. Do you understand what's going on here? Do you understand... Why uh, I think it's so fucking hilarious that he's having a complete and utter meltdown. Making it exceedingly risky for clinicians to do anything ever, but agree always and about everything with their clients, have likely doomed the practice of clinical psychology, which always depended. In now he's saying that clinical psychology is doomed. Do you know what this message even says? Like, not look. I have a lot of critiques of psychology and psychiatry. But you know what this is you know what this is doing, right? This is just injecting vague doubt. This is creating another them in the minds of his followers. Entirely on trust and privacy. Similar moves are afoot in other professional disciplines such as medicine and law. And if you don't think that psychologists, lawyers, and other professionals are anything but terrified of their now woke governing professional colleges, much to everyone's extreme detriment, you simply don't understand how far all of this has gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just exactly what am I supposed to do when I meet a grad student or young Thank professor you. hired you, on Dragon. die grounds? Manifest instant skepticism Thank you, Almighty regarding their professional ability? What a slap in the face to a truly meritorious outsider. And perhaps that's the point. The die ideology is not friend to peace and tolerance. It is absolutely and completely the enemy of competence and justice. And for those of you who think that I am overstating again. Oh, he's about to address us. In the case or that this is something limited in some trivial sense to the university. Consider some other examples. This report from Hollywood, cliched hotbed of liberal sentiment, for example, indicates just how far this has gone. In 2020, 
the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, the Oscar people, embarked on a five-year plan. Does that ring any historical bells? To, quote, diversify our organization and expand our definition of the best. Like, is this anything? This is like David Icke level stuff. Unironically, like being like a report about Hollywood says that some Hollywood firms said that they wanted to diversify organization. Like this is meaningless, meaningless. They did so in an attempt which included developing, quote, new representation and inclusion standards for Oscars to hypothetically, quote, better reflect the diversity of the movie going audience what f the di the diversity of the movie going audience has been out of pace with the diversity of on-screen actors for the entire history of, of the fucking world you realize that right like hollywood has had a huge issue with people of color being people of color and, and women and trans people being able to get jobs ever appearing on screen no matter how good of an actor or actress they are isn't that insane fruit has this initiative offspring of the die ideology born according to also ridiculous he's making a claim that this edi thing this edi policy at his school is the source of this ideology what this was this happened before it happened over the past five years edi probably wasn't even a term then what are you talking about again time traveling everybody you thought that we were the only ones time traveling no jordan peterson is actively live time traveling the recent article penned by peter kiefer and peter savodnik but posted on former New York Times journalist Barry Weiss's Common Sense uh, website. Barry Weiss. And Weiss left the Times because of the intrusion of radical left ideology into that newspaper, just as Tara Henley did recently vis-a-vis -vis the CBC. Quote, mm. We spoke to more than 25 writers, directors, and producers, all of whom identify as liberal, and all of whom described a pervasive fear of running afoul of the new dogma. How to survive the revolution? By becoming... Demented. Like, I just want... Let's go... Can we go right now? I'm sorry. Can we just go to the New York Times, like, right now? In rebuke to Trump, Supreme Court won't block release of January 6th files. Biden says he expects Putin will order a Ukraine invasion. Russia and Iran put on a show of unity against the U.S. Is this really the communist messaging that he wants to make it out to be? Like, I'm not a big fan of the New York Times, and I do think the New York Times has some pretty apparent biases, but I really just don't feel like this is like the Maoist newsletter he's making it out to be. Like the way he describes the New York Times is that l like far left ideology has completely taken it over. And they're just like reporting exactly like every other website. Where is he? Where is he fucking talking about literal? What? Where is he talking about a, a Mer one America News Network or Newsmax? These crazy fucking things that are literally considered news shows in America that are just putting out completely made up uh conspiracy theories claiming that joe biden has dementia like right now literally just fucking made up shit i mean it's most ardent supporter suddenly every conversation with every agent or head of content started with is anyone bipoc attached to this and this is everywhere oh yeah totally and if you don't see it your head is either in the sand or shoved somewhere far more unmentionable. CBS for... Lame. Just say it. Just say it shoved up your ass. Dude, come on. That is so cheesy. I'll show you. Oh, Muffin. Oh, I'll show you. You might have your... your uh, shove it up your Muffin.
for example, has literally mandated that every writer's room be at least 40% BIPOC in 2021, 50% in 2022. We are now at the point where race, ethnicity, gender, or sexual preference is first accepted as the fundamental characteristic defining each person, just as the radical leftists were hoping, and second, is now treated as the most important qualification for study, research, and employment. Need I point out that this is insane? Even the benighted New York Times has its doubts. A headline from August 11th, 2021. Are workplace diversity programs doing more harm than good? In a word, yes. How can accusing your employees of racism, etc., sufficient to require retraining, particularly in relationship to those who are working in good faith to overcome whatever bias they might still in these modern liberal times manifest, be anything other than... Oh, I'm sorry, Comrade Muffins. I didn't mean to offend you by saying shove it up your muffin. Really sorry. Next time I'll use a more acceptable word. Yeah, like cupcake. Yeah, cupcake. Wait, but we have a... Oh. Okay, can't do cookie, can't do muffin. Do we, I don't think we have a cupcake in chat. Let's check. We don't have a cupcake in chat. We got it. Shove it up your cupcake. Insulting, annoying, invasive, high-handed, moralizing, inappropriate, ill-considered, counterproductive, and otherwise. Okay, I'm sorry. It's very funny to me. I uh, Honestly, it's very funny to me that in this exact paragraph in which he's describing people as being preachy, high-handed, smug, blah, 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 he sounds, listen to, just listen to him Insulting, here. Insulting, annoying, invasive. Annoying. I hate it when people are annoying, invasive, m smug, at talk with an air of intellectualism that they don't actually have. I hate that. Oh, I hate it. Handed. Moralizing, inappropriate. Moralizing. Jordan Peterson complaining about anybody being moralizing. This is the guy who says, who says, well, you wouldn't understand that because you're female. You just don't understand the difference between the dragon of order and the dragon of chaos and how they must be balanced. If you would clean your room, your life would be better. Clean your fucking room. Ill-considered, counterproductive, and otherwise unjustifiable. And if you think die is bad, and it is, wait. <laughs> Did he watch the Amon animations video and decide to try and make the faces from that? High-handed, moralizing, inappropriate, ill-considered, counterproductive, and otherwise unjustifiable. And if you think die is bad, and it is, arr, arr, angry Jordan. Hold on, let's get it. We got Can we get a screenshot of this? Hold on, I got to I don't this. even know if it's dishonesty at this point. Like, I don't know that. I don't know if I can call Jordan Peterson a grifter anymore because I think he might have just sort of crossed, like, he sort of, like, crossed the veil, right? Like, for a while, it's very clear that, like, he had a, a worldview, but that he was willing to, like, play it up and play up the drama. But, like, the guy looks unironically disturbed here. Yeah, his continue his continued insistence of referring to EDI as die is the saddest cope. It's so weird. Yeah, it's fucking weird. Like on unironically, if if I, I don't feel bad for Jordan Peterson ever because I hate Jordan Peterson, and Jordan Peterson is one of the reasons that the last decade of my life has involved a fuckload of stress about transphobia, because Jordan Peterson was directly responsible for introducing huge portions of the budding baby alt-right into transphobia specifically as a focus. Let's continue, everyone. Let us, we need to make our way through this. Get a load of environmental, social, and governance ESG scores. See Please. the Vanguard oh my website God. for more information. That'd be amazing, Killjoy. Purporting to assess corporate moral responsibility, these scores, which can dramatically affect an enterprise's financial viability, are nothing less than the equivalent of China's damnable social credit system. Dude, okay. 
again, just unhinged. The idea that a policy, a policy that recommends, uh, that recommends, uh, actually studying the diversity of your, of your, um, of your organization specifically for the purpose of data of like data collection is not the same as a fucking social credit system, which first of all, like, I don't even know enough about the social credit system to say if what the right wingers claim it is even is what it is. Like, I have no doubts that like China does some really fucked up surveillance shit, but I don't know enough about it. But the idea, I know what a social credit system in concept is. And the idea that a single policy at your school at which they're going to review and see whether or not the grant applicants actually are, um, you know, talking about diversity. And then they explicitly say in the policy that they're not going to count it against you if you don't. They just want you to do it. Let's go. Applied to the entrepreneurial and financial world. CEOs, what in the world is wrong with you? Can't you see that the... <laughs> CEOs, what in the heck is wrong with you? What the heckaroo are these CEOs doing? What are you up to? And then he follows it up with, why are you being so diverse? Can't you be less diverse and not like, why are there like four, four petroleum CEOs who are single-handedly making the decision about whether the planet is going to burn or not? And then there are four pharmaceutical CEOs, all of whom like personally decided to give, to like drop oxycodone pills into the mouths of dying children. And they were like, yep, not that though. That's not the problem. You heckin' CEOs, why are you being so goddamn diverse? Ideologues who push such appalling nonsense are driven by an agenda that is not only absolutely antithetical to your free market enterprise as such, but precisely targeted at the freedoms that made your success possible. Can't you see that by going- Whoa, 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 whoa. hold on a minute. He's just admitting it. He's just admitting it. He said, can't you see you're eroding the only thing that made your success possible? Yeah, you're right. The reason why, like, the 90% of C white, white guy CEOs are in their position is because they climbed a ladder built on fucking horrible racism. It's true. It's true. Wow. He finally is just coming out and saying it. Oh, my God. He admit it. Comrade Peterson. Unintentional. I don't think it's intentional here. Do you think... Do you think a man, have you noticed that every single time we pause this video, his face looks like a, like a fucking Mario 64 uh, menu, you know, where you can stretch his nose out every single time. This dude is so motherfucking pissed, screaming in his closet because I think mostly because of a beef with Ethan Klein. Like he was mad about this shit, but I think it was his beef with H3H3 that really pushed him over the edge. Yeah, a beef. The great irony. It comes full circle, everybody. It comes full circle. It's like history. It poems. Cheap like, just as the professors are doing, just as the artists and writers are doing, that you are generating a veritable fifth column within your businesses? Are you really so blind, cowed, and cowardly? Ah! Your so -called ah! Right after we made the beef pun... Now he's making cow puns. Privilege. And it's not just the universities and the professional colleges and Hollywood and the corporate world. Diversity, inclusivity and equity, that radical leftist trinity is destroying us. Wondering about the divisiveness that is currently besetting us? Look no farther than die. Finally. Do you know that Vladimir Putin himself is capitalizing on this woke madness? Anna Majar Barducci at What? I told you. You all were laughing. You all were laughing at me and saying that me uh me rambling incoherently with a cow mask was 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 some sort of of buffoonish cartoonish uh mockery of what the internet actually looks like. But I behold to you right now. 
a screaming, crying, famous old man who has never not had a way to inject his stupid thoughts directly into your face, crying about being censored and claiming, enough, enough! Did you know that Vladimir Putin apparently has something to do with with diversity programs in a University of Toronto? Uh-huh. Okay. ...at the altar of die and insist that the rest of us who mostly want to be left alone do so as well. Ooh. Enough already. Wait, who mostly want to be left alone? You had tenure at your university. You resigned from your own university unprovoked. Let's continue. Ready. Enough. Enough. Finally, do you know that Vladimir Putin himself is capitalizing on this woke madness? Anna Majar Barducci at memri.org covered his recent speech. I quote from the article. Pen Sabi says, no, 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 no. Demon Mama, the cultural Marxist sent him to Siberia by forcing diversity onto him. To cope, he had to swallow all those zannies like smarties. It's the cultural Marxists, I tell you. It's the cultural Marxists. <laughs> Unironically, though. That you, you just told what, what we actually, that was the, your summary was better than mine. I gotta have you write summaries for me. ...translation. Putin speaking. The advocates of so-called social progress believe they are introducing humanity to some kind of a new and better consciousness. Godspeed, hoist the flags as we say, go right ahead. The only thing that I want to say now is that their prescriptions are not new at all. It may come as a surprise to some people, but Russia has been there already. After the 1917 revolution, the Bolsheviks, relying on the dogmas of Marx oh, and Engels, no. also said that they would change existing ways and... Woke culture. Woke culture created the Soviet Union. No, Dr. Peterson. Peterson, you're writing backwards. He's writing history backwards. Oh, no. Oh, I... Oh, God, no. This is elder abuse. We're witnessing elder Listen, abuse. Never mind. Never mind. Canceling it. We're just going back to laughing at him. Fuck it. Customs, and not just political and economic ones, but the very notion of human morality and the foundations of a healthy society. The destruction of age-old values, religion, and relations between people, up to and including the total rejection of family. We had that, too. Encouragement to inform on loved ones. All this was proclaimed progress and by the way, was widely supported around the world back then and was quite fashionable. Same as today. By the way, the Bolshevik... Yeah, same as today. We, we definitely have a culture of the left encouraging you to snitch on your family members to the federal government for being um, a, a dissenter. Oh yeah, that's super popular on the left. You know? Oh, I, I, I love that. It's definitely not like literally a year after we were in the presidency of a guy who ordered the black bagging of protesters, a guy who was like, yeah, we're just going to send in the National Guard to deal with peaceful protests. A guy who was like, yeah, one of my closest, uh, one of my closest advisors said that we should send literally fully armed paratroopers in, uh, deploy the military into a United States soil to deal with BLM. Yeah, yeah, but but we live right now in a world where the liberals are they're definitely they're they're snitching on you for not going to brunch on time. Oh my fucking god. Demented. We're absolutely Demented. intolerant of opinions other than theirs. Putin continues. This I believe should call to mind some of what we are witnessing now. Looking at what is happening in a number of Western countries, we are- Oh, you know what's the great irony about this too? It's really funny. I have a lot of connections to a bunch of conservatives in my family, loose connections these days, but I still know what's going on. And it's really funny. Of all of my friends and extended family, the fucking liberal and, and like middle of the road folks, their families are all like, okay. Like, they're like, hey, you know, we, we, we know each other. We don't agree on everything, but we go to holidays together and treat each other with general respect. And every family that's like a hardline conservative is fucked up beyond all, beyond all recognition now. It's just unbelievable. Every single friend I know, yeah, retcon is another example. Retcon, you could probably tell the chat about the shit your fucking Trump 
Trump head family has done. The Trump heads literally, like, fucking, I know two separate people who've had family members threaten to kill them over whether or not Trump was good or bad. Like, that was the core issue, was whether Trump was based or cringe. And they were like, we're gonna fucking kill you! I know two separate people in my personal life who've had that experience, in addition to my own experiences with a crazy conservative family. This idea that, like, liberal families are all, like, uh, get, you know, members of the fucking KGB snitching on each other and having them, like, disappear into the middle of the night is insane. Wh meanwhile, conservatives are, like, literally kicking their kids out on the street, fucking threatening their uncle's lives, fucking shooting at each other over whether or not, like, you know, Ben Garrison's newest comic was sick or not holy fuck yeah exactly fucking yeah exactly like what fawn is saying so ridiculous i'm sorry i'm so i'm so i'm so sorry i really lost myself there We're amazed to see domestic practices which we fortunately have left i hope in the distant past the fight for equality and against discrimination has turned into aggressive dogmatism bordering on absurdity Thanks, when the works of the great authors of the past such as Shakespeare, are no longer taught at schools or universities because their ideas are believed to be backward. Citation needed. I would be fucking floored if there is a, if I would be floored if Shakespeare wasn't currently on the curriculum of every single high school in America. I know, surprise, the guy who was in like a meat, meat and benzos induced coma lives in his own reality. I just want you to know, though, that that this is the guy. This video has 300,000 views and his core complaint right now is about censorship and that he's become uh, an anathema worldwide and that he can't get his voice out there. The level of narcissism just... Uh, fucking black hole tier na narcissism that requires you to scream that the world is censoring you when you're able to just put out a video and casually get 300,000 people to see it in the course of four hours. Just what the fuck? The classics are declared backward and ignorant of the importance of gender and race. In Hollywood, memos are distributed about proper storytelling and how many characters of what color or gender should be in a movie. This is even worse than the agitprop department of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. <laughs> no, he didn't just say that. Okay, okay, okay. I'm so sorry. Can we try this again? Please. I, I just, please. Absurdity. Listen to this. When the works of the great authors of the past, such as Shakespeare, are no longer taught at schools or universities because their ideas are believed to be backward. The classics are declared backward and ignorant of the importance of gender and race. In Hollywood, memos are distributed about proper storytelling and how many characters of what color or gender should be in a movie. This is even worse than the agitprop department of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. A memo, a memo, a Disney, a, a Walt, I just, I'm sorry, a Walt Disney memo being distributed about diversity is worse than the KGB agitprop division of the fucking USSR. Do you see why I said, I know that today has been a bit of a wind up, everybody. I know that it's been a bit of a journey to get to the, the center of this drama. But do you understand precisely why we followed this little rabbit hole today, everyone? All four fucking hundred of you who are watching right now. Do you understand why Demon Mama took you on this insane journey? The, a man who can, f with this fucking idiot has 4.47 million subscribers on YouTube. This guy has the, the nearest thing to telepathy. He can just make a stupid ass take and broadcast it directly into the eyes and brains of millions of people. 
and he's fucking screaming about how Walt a Walt Disney memo that says maybe we should be a little more diverse, okay, is worse than the fucking KGB. I'm sorry, like, that is an allegation of such a level of absurdity. Uh, do you know, like, okay, so how many times has Walt Disney, actually, maybe this is a bad question, how many times has the Walt Disney Corporation had, like, people sat down in metal chairs that are strapped to, to, to fucking car batteries, okay? How many times has Walt Disney had someone shot in the back of the head six times and then openly have it published as a suicide and the pictures of the six bullets in the back of his head are published alongside of it and they're just like, that was a suicide. Damn, and the citation is the KGB. But yes, the Walt Disney, the Walt Disney fucking uh, corporation memo about diversity is literally worse, guys. Literally worse. Okay, seriously, Jordan Peterson is definitely a very serious intellectual. And remember, his claim for why he just threw his own job out the window. Remember those guys who were burning their Nikes? Remember that shit? With the Colin, was it Colin Kaepernick that, that triggered the Nike burning thing? Remember that shit? Jordan Peterson just did that. On He just burned a one-of-a-kind fucking Nike the tr just into thin air. This guy just threw hundreds, more money than you will ever see in your fucking life. This guy just threw out the window because apparently he's being censored by Walt Disney KGB agents who have infiltrated academia and you're supposed to take that guy seriously. And there's millions of people on the internet who will tell you to take that guy seriously. It is now that I must reveal that I lied. I lied at the beginning of my video when I said that in Drama Mama, we always try to get to the bottom of the drama before passing any judgment. I could not do it this time. I violated the rule of Drama Mama. There is no possible way the the absurdity of any person walking up to me and telling me that I should take Jordan Peterson or anything that this fuckhead has ever said seriously is weighing on me and has has broken my back and I could not uphold the creed of drama mama. The truth is this dude's a fucking total fraud. This dude's totally lost his goddamn mind and there's like a, a machine, a shambling like ghoulish machine that keeps telling him yeah you're yeah dude yeah you're right on you're right on yeah and the patreon and the and the 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 suspicious daughter this is scary this is literally like it's fucking elder abuse you don't understand because you just haven't watched his 400 hours of 10 year old lectures on his youtube channel thank you i've actually multiple people unironically have said that to me multiple people have told me to go watch all of his lectures before i say anything about him that's ridiculous all you ever need to do is watch anything like this he put out this is a video by the way we forgot another detail hold on a second everybody i'm about to make it worse i'm about to make it worse okay watch this watch this this video remember is a reading of an article that was published in the fucking National Post, which already has 1,335 comments from three hours ago. So not only is this guy complaining about being, oops, not only is this guy complaining about being censored, he's complaining from the front page of a national newspaper about being censored. Comrade Peterson has arrived. <laughs> Fucking Comrade Peterson. Oh my God. <laughs> what did you say about Stalin? <laughs> Hold on a second. Jesus fucking Christ. Hold on a second. Wait a second. I got this. I got, we got this. Come
comrades, I have come here to tell you today that our glorious KGB has finally overcome the Walt Disney Corporation espionage division. Our torture methods have finally surpassed them. We have defeated wokeness at its heart and replaced it with classic cultural Marxism. I mean, cultural Bolshevism. Now that we're in charge, I'll have you know that the Walt Disney Corporation's military will crumble. We will bury them. We will bury them and I will return to my retreat in Siberia where I will enjoy my diet of pure meat and benzodiazepines until the day that I retire as the most glorious dictator that the USSR has ever seen. I will overcome Disney. I will overcome the Western imperialist influence via Walt Disney's memo about diversity. But this is just the beginning of the battle. And I need you all, my comrades, my proletarian comrades, to stand strong and keep submitting to my Patreon. Please, for the love of God, I have a lot of lawsuits I'm trying to beat. I keep losing my car keys, and Michaela tells me that, I, that she has them, but won't give them to me. Anyway, what was I saying? Vladimir Putin has a vested interest in... I'm hungry. I think it's time for me to go get a cider. See you later, everyone. No, Jordan Peterson. No, Comrade Peterson. Don't drink the cider. Oh, God. Is there anything else to say about this Jordan Peterson thing? There isn't. I, j I can tell you there's nothing left to say. There's just nothing left for me to say about this. Jordan Peterson. Let's see. Wait. Maybe we can, maybe we can end this, this segment off by seeing what he's tweeting currently. Has he tweeted anything else? No. He has tweeted as of two hours ago after th saying, you don't get to choose a price not to pay. You get to choose which poison you're going to take. That's it. That was his like, uh, you know, deviant art, Sonic, the Hed uh, Shadow, the Hedgehog post that he did four hours ago. And then he posted a thing that said, this is such a beautiful painting with a link to a Google image of Jesus Christ holding a lantern. That's where this ends. Yes, that's right, everybody. That's where this drama goes. Jordan Peterson beefed with H3H3 and got so mad about it that he is completely self-destructing his entire career. So there's really only one thing. There's only one thing we can do to end this off truly, to really wrap it up, okay? Uh, and that is... We need to listen to this. Peeping creep. Peeping creep. Teaching the game for creeps like me. Nobody can tell just what I can see. Peeping creep. Peep the cuties at the beach. You might think I'm asleep, but I'm looking at your kids. I'll be watching you and your mother too. Society can't judge me for what, what my, my eyes, eyes do. do. I'm locked onto those jokes and I'm peeping This could be Jordan hard, Peterson's anthem.
for creeps like me. Nobody can tell just what I can see. Peeping creep. This is Peepin' Creep, a song that really just sums up some of the greatest work of Ethan Klein of H3H3. H3H3, which has now apparently been the straw that breaks Jordan Peterson's back in the strangest turn of events. Just, you know, H3H3 out of fucking left field, fucking in with the steel chair, fucking unexpected. The underdog came to snap the back of the Jordan... Peterson legacy, apparently. That's where we are.